Okay, y'all. This is my last video of the night. Coming down off that last one. Yeah, coming down off that last one. So, this grapefruit juice. Mmm. I got a request. From, I think it was just one person, but I think she requested it on a couple of different places. To do some of my favorite. Or just where she can do some of her first research on her first feminist writings. And most of mine are black feminist writings. But, um... Of course, there's some really brilliant ladies that I'm sure will have some great suggestions. Every book that I'm going to talk about, um, I will list in the sidebar. You can get them off of Amazon. But what I tell people is when you're, when you're building your own personal book collection, of course you can buy them new. But a used book has the same words. So I go on, um, I list those places too, but I go on textbooks.com and Alibris. It's A-L-I-B-R-I-S dot com. They're really great. Um, I really, really like that. That's where I get most of my books. Of course, you can go on half.com and other places like that. But Alibris is one of my favorites. So, of course, my first was An I Woman by Bell Hooks. Um, it, it changed my life. She did, she says some wonderful things in here that are, that will really make you think about things that you've always thought were the case. You know, how patriarch society can be and make you question things that you, you never thought to question before. She's really quite brilliant in a lot of things. Um, you know, it's just like in this, when uh, the civil rights movement began, black women participate but they did not strive to overshadow black male leaders you know things like that uh sh she's just brilliant and she's very hardcore in her writing and she just she don't play she don't play at all she does not play um she also she's written several i think she's written about t oh 10 12 books 13 but this one is particularly special to me because she wrote this in her undergrad she was an undergrad when she wrote this. Like, that's amazing to me. Like, I'm an undergrad. Like, I can't imagine writing a book that people love to this day. You know, it's amazing. Uh, uh, she also wrote Feminism is for Everyone. Um, that is also another book. If you haven't, you don't know very much about feminist writing, that's a great book to start with. As, as well as this one. So, In Our Woman, Black Feminism. Black woman feminism is really good. Oh, uh, what else? She writes, um, these are not all my famous writings. This is just what I brought with me this year. She writes great books about love and uh, just self-love and black love and community. And So this is another one. I had to write this one for class. But anyone who suggests bell hooks on their book list is great. It's called All About Love, um, New Visions. Uh, this is about bell hooks. Um, it's called The Claim First Volume and Her Love Song to the Nation. Uh, it just asks the question of what is love. It's really, really great. I read this one. Um, it's really, really good. It just talks about greed and spirituality and justice. And just things that you learn about love through your life. And she gives personal stories. Um, this one you know, may be good for some of the men to read. It's uh, Salvation Black people in love. It's a, a couple walking down the street, walking down the road. Uh, really wonderful. Really, really wonderful writing. She, she's amazing. Uh, another author that you would really want to know about is um, Patricia Hill Collins. She writes another book. I cannot think of it, but it's like Black Feminist Thought um, it's on Amazon. It's, the price goes up and down that book. But it's amazing. It's really a staple in black feminist writing. But this is also another great one. It's uh, Black Sexual Politics. It's by Patricia Hill Collins. She is one of the leading writers of black feminist writers. And uh, oh, this is amazing. Um, it just talks about, you know, black sexual politics and how we look at each other. Uh, through sexuality and how we see each other's bodies, and but it's written from a, a, a feminist standpoint, and how you know how we have authority over one another's bodies, or how men have authority over women's bodies, and gender politics is really, really good. Uh, a 
okay. And of course, another Bell Hooks book. I love her. You just, you just don't know. I really do. Um, Angela Davis has some really great books. Uh, okay, um, this is another by Bell Hooks. She's absolutely fabulous. Um, this one really changed my thought process of how men view women. It's called We Real Cool. It's Black Men and Masculinity. Um, it's, and there's a movement by black male feminists, yes, they do exist, um, to question what is masculinity. And just like I've said to women on this channel, you, you determine what is feminine and you determine what is femininity. For the longest time, men and patriarchy have determined for us what is feminine. And we need to get past that. You need to define your own sense of femininity. Uh, let's see. I just really want to read you guys something from this book. Ugh. Here we go. Um, this is something I hear all the time. Black male public discourse about sexuality points the finger at white males, <clears throat> accusing them of being pussies who are unable to keep it up. The black male who could demolish the white male power with weaponry was using his dick to bitch slap white men about, and by doing so, sexually objecting them. Uh, the sexual competition conducted via black male rhetoric created a window of opportunity for whites to openly revive their pornography obsession with the black male body without appearing to be racist. Certainly, white men were the group most fascinated and entertained by black male stories of sexual predation. predation. Powerful stuff. Like, are you serious? Did she really just say that? Yes, she did. She's amazing. And that is how she writes. And she's, she's hot. Like, if you love Bell Hooks, think you love something really, really powerful. She's, she writes like that. Mm. Uh, so, I mean, oh, I saw something, some man, some crazy man said that, um, you know, there was only male feminists so that they could get Gucci. Mm -hmm. That's what he said. He said there are only male feminists out there because it was an easy way for them to get Gucci. So, I will show you one of those <laughs> male feminists. He's amazing. He has a blog, which is really great. He keeps up with his blog. Not like me. Uh, his name is uh, Mark Neal, Mark Anthony Neal, and his book is The New Black Man. Um, I read this for a class uh, about a year ago. And he's he's quite powerful in what he says, and it just, it questions, um, he's questioning his sense of masculinity. And he's he's a straight black man, you know, they think you have to be gay, of course, or something like that. Um, and just what it means to be a man, and questioning some of... You know, the things that have always been associated with black male um, masculinity. Black masculinity. Uh, what else? You know, one of the chapters is, what the hell is a black male feminist? Uh, it is, it's part biography, part, you know, explaining his, his mindset and, you know, explaining what a male feminist is. Because I remember seeing, and I would have this, and men would be like, What's, what's a male feminist? Like, I've had guys around. Like, what's a male feminist? Like, read the book. Read the book. So, uh, it, it, it's very interesting um, to hear, you know, a, a black male feminist. And there are more out there, but he's, he's one of the first to really discuss it. So, it, this is something to look into. Uh, of the books that I don't have are um, Simone de Beauvoir, The Second Sex. It... It, it changed the way I thought about, you know, women, how how I believe that society looks at women in general. Um, there's also a book that is published about the discourse and the rocky relationship between male and female feminist. Not male and female feminist. Black and white female feminist. Uh, during the movement, there's also a wonderful book about black feminist movement I'll post that I've read I read through some of it it's very interesting it talks about how those organizations organizations started and um, somewhat how they fall, start to fall apart um, because of lack of uh, resources lack of funding um, lack of support 
things like that. So it's, there's, I'll, I'll put the total list of books that I, I think are wonderful. By all means, we have a, a wonderful group of intelligent women here to, um, to offer their suggestions on books that they've read. They're absolutely magnificent. But these are some of my personal favorites. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. So I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.